Hello everyone, it's me. Why is this so dark? There we go. That was weird. If it was just momentarily dark, I apologize. I don't really know what caused that. Hello, it's me, Coffee Stitcher. Happy, uh, happy Father's Day to any fathers out there who watch this. I don't think there are too many, but happy Father's Day as well to any single moms who are also fathers. Mm. I hope everyone had a, uh, a great week. Um, I didn't get, it's probably gonna be a shorter video today. Um, there's no haul. Um, the, uh, so we've got some Q&A. Um, we've got some whip updates, but not a lot. So, um, I guess we'll dive right in. How was everybody's week? Okay, so, um, that's good to hear. We'll dive in with our Q&A. Um, Rose City Stitcher asks, when you use Petite Treasure Braid on a fabric, on a pattern instead of Chronic number four, how many strands of Petite Treasure Braid will you use? Still usually going to be one, um, because it's the same thickness. The only exception might be if you're going to do, um, do it on perf perforated paper, then you would want to. But otherwise, just, just one. Um, G Wiz would love some tips on stitching with variegated floss. I think I'm doing it correctly, but not getting very good results. Um, I actually did a video way, 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 way back. It's about, I think, video number 13 or so, um, where I go into a lot of detail on um, variegated threads. What my suggestion is, is base it on um, uh, da, 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 da. base it on um, what sort of effect you're wanting. Um, if you've got one that's and the effect you're going for. So if it's a tree trunk, I usually stitch it going up and down. If it's like, say, grass, I'll stitch it across. Um, tree leaves, a lot of times I'll stitch that in a circle or sort of in a random pattern. Um, it really depends on the effect you're going for. You don't have to complete every X. For instance, if you've got grass, but it's a super variegated floss, you may want to go down one and then back. Um, that might make it less of an, less stripey looking. But if it's subtle, then it may not matter. It just sort of depends on the effect you're looking for. Um, Joanne P. would like to know, uh, says that she thought my original, or that Aaron's website was stitching in the loo as in the bathroom, um, and it might be something that you would hang in your toilet that you wouldn't hang elsewhere, so what slightly, slightly subversive stitching would you hang in, in my loo? Um, and I would probably, if I were gonna do one, do the please don't do coke in the bathroom. Um, there are pictures of two-year-old me. They are on Facebook. I don't have an easy way of showing them to you, though. Um, because I, when I've tried to show things on the tablet, it gets glary, so, and I don't have physical copies of them here, so. Um... Dee Dee Rose um, asks, does Aaron have a floss tube channel? He does. Marilyn's boy, like Marilyn Monroe. Uh, so that's his channel. And yes, they were a very lovely gift. Um, so thank you again, Aaron. Um, the General Stitcher has a couple of questions. Um, when, uh, we have a home, I have a stitching wall and what will be displayed. Honestly, it's going to depend a lot on the home. Um, I figure I will probably do like a, there's going to be some that'll just be throughout. Um, but I'm sure there will probably be like a hallway that's just my gallery. Um, and it's probably just going to be whatever I want. Um... She also wants to know what my thoughts are on the diamond painting phrase. She says, I know many stitchers seem to like doing it as an alternative to stitching, and it does get others into creating art, 
and some people do find it physically easier. But personally, I don't like how it is taking away from stitching as far as being compared to it in product marketing, and in a way it cheapens the art of stitching. Um, personally, diamond painting, not for me. I would probably get very bored with it. If you like it, hey, great, fabulous. That's, I'm not going to begrudge that to you. Um, and at the end of the day, I don't think it cheapens anything. Um, I, at least, no more so than, and I know this is an unpopular opinion, but I think generally Hades, um, some of them are really well converted, but I, I don't really think most of them are all that great myself. Um, so it's a matter of personal taste. It's not for me. I'm not going to knock anyone for doing them, though. And if you enjoy it, great. Um, there's plenty of room for everyone. Um, Patricia Stratter asks, do you stack your finished pieces that are not framed? The answer is no. They mostly go in various plastic bags and get shoved in a drawer. Um, I figure I can always iron out any wrinkles, and what can't be ironed out will get stretched out because our framer is fabulous. Um, Grace Patane asks, um, do I know how I'm going to finish Wizard of Oz? It will be finished as a, uh, in, in a frame. Um, and when I start a new project, where do you usually start? Center, corner, bottom? Generally, I start in the center, um, unless there's a reason that I need to start in the corner. Um, so usually that's just going to be mystery stitch alongs, but usually I will start in the center, um, just because then I feel less anxious about, am I going to run out of space? Um, which may be a challenge on one that I started. Okay, so, um, let's see. So, last weekend I was working on the Clouds Factory Disney, and I've still got to do the Bippity-Boppity-Boo portion, um, and then obviously the border, but I got the characters all done. So there we go. Um... But I didn't like it charted in the purple, and I think I want something a little more interesting. So I'm waiting until I get a stitch niche to see what I can find. But there we go. There's Cinderella in all her glory. Um, and then I, as I discussed last week, I started um, the Soda Stitch Aladdin on Tuppence by Ship's Manor. Um, and it's going to be a little bit of a stretch because I missed my center mark a little when I started. So I still have the space to do this one on. Um, but it's going to be tight. It's going to be a tight squeeze. Um, but I got the... Um, yeah. I got the palace done. Minus the back stitching. I need to pick a different brown to outline the tops of that with. Um... And then we'll continue on with more later. Um, but here it is. Um, I'm really liking it so far. And it looks really pretty on this fabric. So I was kind of in a finish hole this week. I didn't get a lot of stitching done. Um, I did on my uh, Wine and Whip. I got two more books done on Beatrix Potter. So next time I rotate will be another book. Um, so I picked up a couple things, none of them held my attention. I tried Pumpkin Passport, which I'd been excited to start on and just didn't do it. Um, I tried Longfellow's Round Tower, it didn't do it. So I, I figured, you know, I finished a book that I was reading, Cinderella and Wizard of Oz, so I kind of fell into a finish hole. So last night I started working again. Um, one of my friends has been stitching up Rose of Sharon by Mirabilia, um, and it made me want to pull out Woodland Fairy again. So I pulled out Woodland Fairy. So, um, when last I left, I'd actually done the light color here, and I'd started it here, um, but it was too light by comparison. It's that pink there. So what I ended up doing is I went back and I tweeted the color, the darker it with the color right before it, and that worked a lot better. So I'm working on it. My goal is going to be finish this part in here, and this part, and then... We'll see, I may rotate, I may not. Um, but I'm enjoying it. Um, so it's Woodland Fairy, and I'm doing a pink conversion on her dress. And this is on Enchanted Forest by Under the Sea Fabrics. 
so yeah that's kind of it um don't really have too much else this week um yeah so i hope everyone is doing great um i hope you all have a wonderful week and i'll see you next time bye